Welcome back to the I'm About It podcast. Yes, hello everyone. Um, I'm back. It's been a, a few months hiatus, which I kind of broke down in another video that I wanted to drop and didn't get to drop. And I'm just not going to go into as to why I didn't drop. I've been dropping episodes, but I think the episode, uh, the last episode, well, the episodes that I've been filming, that I've been posting, we'll get into all of that. Now, I really do want to talk about the Kendrick and Drake beef because it's like a very interesting one and it's a very fascinating one as well and i think i want to add another discourse a different topic a different conversation to the whole dynamic that is the kendrick lamar and drake uh beef and i just gotta say the reason why like this beef is going viral is because a lot of the salaciousness and a lot of you know the dark the darkness that this beef has definitely been like the path that this rap beef has taken but this goes to show as to why i would never date a person who's definitely like you know a kendrick lamar or drake uh, because it reminds me of like the whole taylor swift situation like imagine you are dating someone really famous and you are really just having all of these like intimate situations with this person but they're a famous person and how they produce the way they feel about certain things about the world and about people is through their art and their opinion of you your partner either you're married or either you're the side piece whatever wherever you end up being your friend the friend they produce their feelings and their thoughts through their art. And that's why I've always said I would never ever date a guy who's definitely going to be a person who's famous because I do not want my business on the internet. I do not want a rap beef. I do not want any rapper, any music artist, any painter, whoever that famous person may be, drag my family name and my name up and down the streets. And that is, that's honestly how I feel. Um, and that's why if I end up dating anybody that is really, you know, successful, I just, I just make sure that I'm that they're not famous, um, or they hide me from their uh, fame because I do not want to be swallowed up by that. I do not want my name tainted by anything that they have going through, and you know, I don't want to be the collateral damage of what it is their ability to you know, make a hit record or, you know, be more successful and get gain more money. And this rap beef really does remind me of the Taylor Swift album that just dropped, the Poet Society or the Poet Society Department, I forgot what it's called. The way Taylor Swift is really opening up, uh, opening up about her romantic relationships and her platonic relationships and just giving it everything that she can and just closing, creating closure for herself before she can goes on, goes on to the next part of her life. And which is with Travis Kelsey. And that's what everybody's assuming that her next album will be about Travis Kelsey. I do honestly do believe and think that, you know, this is very reminiscent of that. I think we're in a time and age, rap beef used to be something where it's just about rapping. You know, you rap your heart out, you rap as much as you can rap in this battle so you can prove that you're you're good at rapping, that you can exercise your skill and master the skill of rapping with your, you know, your nemesis, your counterpart, your formidable opponents, right? But now it's like whoever can find the biggest dirt and how they can, you know, use strategy and skill and put that into rap music. And I get that. And let me just foreshadow everything. And let me just let you know that I loved the rap beef. I loved every single minute of what Kendrick Lamar and Drake did for hip hop and what they did for the world. The music that was produced over the last weeks or weeks was incredible from euphoria to like that to meet the grams to family matters there were incredible you know incredible credible tracks and i just have to say that if kendrick lamar is dropping an album he has to drop an album that is kind of like like that 
because uh, there's no way you can drop something like this past previous album, which is still really good. And it's interesting too, because I never knew, I was like, I'm not super educated about hip hop. I love obviously hip hop and rap artists. So there's some music that I love. I did not know that Kendrick Lamar was the person. If you talk to anybody who's a music buff and who's into music and who's into hip hop and rap, they would say that Kendrick Lamar is at his top, top of his game. He's the best. But apparently he never got a hit single, um, go viral or anything like that. Like he never got a number one hit single, something like that. And he's always on, you know, he's always featuring, he's always on features. But apparently Drake is at his top of his game. And that's why I want to talk about, I do want to dive into a lot of the issues and topics that a lot of people are kind of talking about when it came to the beef between Kendrick Lamar and Drake. So I just want to say that Kendrick Lamar's writing is incredible. Um, his strategy, his ability to put in tendras, the, the ability to really provide further meaning and foreshadowing and for allowing us to read in between the lines of certain a lot of his lyrics um giving an insight at how he works and how he writes and how he raps and that's probably the reason why he he got a pulitzer prize it's probably a reason why he got um like people like you know you know institutions like harvard university are studying him i find him just incredibly fascinating and i find him as an artist fascinating not him as a person and let's go into that i think a lot of people have to when it comes to people who are listening to all of this beef and everything that's in you know um rap and hip-hop and there's been a lot of beef that this, that's been going on i think this is the game and ross right now um there's quavo and chris brown uh, it looks like chris brown one in my opinion but a lot of what they're talking about is like chronic kind of crazy stuff right not great stuff and I think a lot of the artists nowadays really do have to separate themselves from their art. I like Chris Brown, the artist, but maybe not so Chris Brown, the man. I like Drake, the artist, maybe not Drake, the man. I like Kendrick, the artist, and not Kendrick, the man. A lot of the things that they're talking about is quite a serious. So I do want to talk about it from my point of view and as a Canadian, as a black woman who grew up in Canada, who was surrounded by, honestly, a lot of Drake fans, but also secret Kendrick Lamar fans. And that's over the past few weeks that has flipped. Um, very, very outwardly so, you know what I mean? Like very, very shamelessly. Like people are saying that they're now Kendrick fan and now they're Drake fans. I doubt that. I honestly do think people who are core Drake fans will forever be core Drake fans. And whenever Drake drops another hit this summer that people are going to be singing to and dancing to and grinding to in the clubs, then they're going to be like, I love Drake again. I want to touch upon some of the things. So it's interesting to me, you know, when somebody would say that, oh my God, I'm, like it used to be a time back in like the mid 2000s, early 2000s that when somebody came out saying that, you know, they hit their partner. So trigger, trigger warning, I'm talking about domestic abuse, that it was a huge thing. I mean, let's look at Chris Brown and Rihanna. Very famously, he, you know, committed assault on Rihanna. And ever since then, it's been alleged, there have been rumors that he's been not so great to his future female partners. And when that is talked about in rap music, where somebody just leaks that information, you kind of like shove it underneath the rug. Because we know that this artist will continue to try to do better and or will put their art first and put everything that they got to their art for their fans. That even though you're a bad person behind the scenes, you are still a great artist. So we still have to like look up to you and still like you, whatever. And there are some people who are not will not do that. There are some people who would never listen to Chris Brown because of Rihanna, after Rihanna. There are some people who would never go to his concert. And that kind of goes down to the Kendrick Lamar and Drake. No one is talking about, for the most part, a lot of like the bad stuff that's happened in the music because it hasn't been proven obviously so it's kind of alleged it's all, all alleged right drake is talking about some other rap beef with some other artists and he's talking about how kendrick lamar you know 
has been abusive, physically abusive, emotionally abusive to his ex and I think, uh, I think, I think ex and current partner, uh, Kendrick Lamar has stated that um, Drake is a pedophile and Drake, you know, um, is a culture vulture and Drake is not a real man and not a real black man. I, and I do want to talk about this. Let's talk with, with like the whole real black man. I mean, for me growing up in a society that was predominantly white, um, it was very hard for me to find myself and I'm still doing that, finding myself as a black woman and be confident in who I am in my identity as a black woman because my blackness were always, you know, suppressed or you know looked down upon or looked different looked at differently from other people because i was a predominantly white society versus others who grew up in a non-predominantly white society in a culturally ethnically r rich environment in neighborhoods and cultures that they were so like their their individuality and who they are their race and their background was fostered while I wasn't I mean and then Drake doesn't I don't know if he, he's ever really touched upon this and what I've been seeing on YouTube and what I've been hearing from people who've dissected the lyrics of all the music between Drake and Lamar and the rap beef because I'm not doing that I just want to talk about some themes is that Drake has tried to really hide his upbringing People are saying that he grew up in the suburbs. You have this mixed, black mixed man. So he's half white and half black. He grew up in the suburbs. He definitely, um, his father wasn't around, but he was around. Like they talked, maybe he wasn't physically in the home. And then you had his mom who was there. But I think throughout his music some of his music would say that his dad wasn't around and all these things and he acted as if he grew up poor in his music and things like that or he kind of alluded to that and you know he had to really rely on black rappers who maybe had their blackness fostered more authentically rather than drake's i guess and maybe that's why he had to really rely on a lot of the, you know, um, undisputed black rappers in the industry, like 21 Savage and Future. And like, like Kendrick Lamar said, in Like That, he has to go all the way to Atlanta to get street cred. Here's my thing with that. I think blackness is shown in all different types of forms and i do think the way white people has has told us has shown us and informed us of how we must act as black people and fit into the stereotypical way of what blackness is is what is prevalent in a lot of the discussions in regards to Drake's blackness. I think a lot of people in black culture are not okay with the fact that you have a mixed black man that is, you know, not really relying on the individuals that made hip hop the way it is. And so he's famous because of his, his incredible ability of making hit songs. But he does, Drake has shown that he does have to n put a knee down to the people who came before him. I don't know what I think about that. I don't know what I feel about that. I do think you need to give respect to those who came before you and give homage but I do not think that Drake has to perform in a way that every single rapper has performed before him. You have a different black man that is performing these incredible melodies and is rapping. And people think he's the top of his game because his ability to create a hit song, his ability to draw a diverse audience. You know, you have all different types of people from all over the world. And he has a plethora 
of non-racialized um, individuals that are part of his audience. So you have some, you have a man that's kind of like a different rapper from the rest. And a lot of people do not get that, do not understand that and do not like that. And I do think that their hate and their inability to understand who Drake is and what Drake represents um, kind of taints their personal view who Drake is and, and, and their opinion of his music. Now, playing devil's advocate, Drake has not done a really good job in making sure that he identifies who he is to the world. He has tried to be basically code switch and be a chameleon to certain individuals to gain popularity, to gain acceptance and to gain approval. And people and his fans, some of his fans and a lot of industry people in the industry have seen through that. And that's why they do think that Drake is kind of like a culture vulture. He really does not really use the footprint of what hip hop is and is making is is basically redefining what hip hop is and a lot of people do not get like that and I understand but before I continue on that point Drake has tried to kind of code switch and kind of take other black man's or black rappers hip hop's identity to gain approval from the industry um to do that to survive and what i say to that is why must he do that why can't drake be who he is today whatever that looks like and i think it all goes down to oh that's not what you do that's not what you do da, 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 in here i'm not me trying to rap like drake or whatever <laughs> But it's like, oh, that's not what you do in the industry. You're supposed to do X, Y, and Z. But what's wrong with you trying to be different? I think people try to compare Drake with J. Cole because he's also a mixed black man. But the problem is, is with the same white white mother and, and, and black father. But the, but the difference is, is that J. Cole has accepted who he is and has tried to not proven to be anybody that he's not. And Drake sometimes does not do that. And he kind of ad conforms to bring in different types of audiences, to conform to please his colleagues, to conform to please the industry. And I think Drake needs to conform into who he is. Show the world this is who he is. And maybe what we've been seeing is who he is. And we just are not taking him at face value. And we're seeing, oh, he's not a black rapper because he doesn't do A, B, C, D, when he's just a different form of a black rapper. And that's the whole thing with, you know, black identity and black people not being a monolith. Like we don't need to be a monolith in the rapping industry. There's different types of rappers who are carving out their different path in this, in this industry and that's okay. So I really don't, I'm not really liking the discourse around Drake's identity because they think that he's pretending to be somebody that he's not. I think sometimes he does. And I do agree with them in the sense that he really no, he really does need to stand on God in the sense that he needs to show the world the sweetest and not waver from that. Because it's quite clear he does have a core Drake audience, like my brother. No matter what's happening right now, even though he could kind of agree that Kendrick won in this rap battle, but he will always love Drake. He will always listen to Drake because it was there from the, from the, from 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 the get go, from number one, right? So, I think that's like really really interesting. The whole conversation of like you know Drake's black identity, and I do think, and maybe that's why because Drake does these type of musics where he feels like he he came from the bottom, like the whole song starting from the bottom. Now I'm here, starting from the bottom. Now we're all things here. I don't know what he means by that because obviously people are saying that he grew up in a townhouse he grew up in the suburbs like he didn't really start from the bottom like the rest of his colleagues um and especially when he grew up being a famous actor like he auditioned and he was in Degrassi so yeah and I think Drake is having kind of like an identity not identity crisis but I think 
Drake has to learn what it means to be a mixed black man in this industry and I think people are not really clear as, as to who he is and what he's trying to portray um and they want him to really speak through and, and want his music to really speak about his personal experiences and not really appropriating his colleagues black experiences so there's that and then there's the fact that you know you have this rap beef that's really kind of pulling on like dark things from the internet i don't really know why the beef came out to be the way it is but i do gotta say it's quite clear through kendrick lamar's actions like you have kendrick lamar who basically said anybody who used my music i'm not gonna claim it i'm not gonna claim copyright because it's quite clear that this is something that Kendrick truly feels. This is not just rappy for him. He really wants to educate the masses and show the world that this is what hip hop stands for. This is who we are. This is what I'm, this is the level of morality, you know, character. And he really, like I said, in the rap beef, it was more about beef. It was like Kendrick was trying to inform the world of what's going on, well, on, about who Drake is as a person and what he's done to the industry and what he's done to us. And that Kendrick doesn't like it. And I don't like the take that Kendrick has. He thinks he's a cult of virtue for what? Being successful. But apparently the way he, Ken, Drake has moved seems as if he is grabbing and using certain parts of black culture to kind of further his agenda i don't completely agree with that and i and i think it's again it goes back to i don't think people believe and maybe what what drake is putting forth to the world is, is who drake is and nobody is is getting that so and it goes down to like morality and character and and everything and the fact that too that we're so okay with a lot of the things that are said in a lot of this rap music like is drake a pdf is do drake surrounded by pdfs um what is going on and people do have those questions and i think some people will stop listening to drake music because of that and I think some people would be like, no, that's not true because it hasn't been proven. And you have your core fans of Drake who would not be wavered, would, who has been here from number one and would not be, you know, shaken whatsoever. I think this rap beef is incredible. I think it really brought all of us, the entire black community together. And I think a lot of people have grown further connections with their family, with their friends who are interested into this rap beef and didn't have the opportunity to really discuss it. I think it's very fascinating in the sense that with all the technology that we have out right now we are have the ability and the time to really put out amazing music if we wanted to and that's also another point of discussion that Kendrick Lamar took four or five years takes four or five years to drop music he's doing that by choice not because he can't drop music every three months is because he's doing it by choice while I think Drake dropped like two or three albums last year which is incredible and I don't even remember what the hell he dropped so it all goes to the fact that Kendrick is trying to produce has certain goals in producing a certain type of music while Drake is producing a certain type of music it's clear that Kendrick loved to you know kind of um give a message and have some type of impact when it comes to his music and it's clear that Drake it does not he just wants to release albums talk about what he's feeling like taylor swift and you know do tours where young people can go to and you know his old fans may not know what songs he's even talking about so maybe drake is actually only for a cash grab i don't know i think it's something that drake will have to hopefully take the time to think about i do want to talk about the point that drake said and i think it was in family matters where he said that or in euphoria that Kendrick was trying to free the slaves. I don't, so, and this is the reason why Kendrick Lamar won the Pulitzer Prize. Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize. Pulitzer Prize. Pulitzer Prize, oh my God. Anyways, I can't talk today. Um, it's 
know what rapping is about? Aren't we black people are trying to use rap as a way to elevate ourselves in society? As so as 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 a way to move the needle, not only in culture, but in society, in our personal lives and professional lives. And yes, get us uh, get us out of slavery and out of institutional, structural, systemic racism. We use rapping, we use rap as a way of therapy, as a way of allowing us to cope with our problems and our issues, to show a message, to provide a message, to pay for our bills. Like, yes, rap rap is our way, a way to get, a, get us out of slavery. So Drake, and this is an interesting topic because People would say, by Drake saying that, Drake is basically saying that he's not black because obviously you're black and we are all, are all trying to get her, get her, get us off, get us out of oppression, get us out of, you know, symbolic slavery, right? And some of us are actually enslaved. There are still people, a lot of people in the world who are still enslaved. But I think Drake is trying to say it in the sense that oh you know you're always trying to prove a point you are always trying to teach us something you're always trying to you know say something from a higher ground so i don't know what he, i think Drake maybe is trying to say in the sense that you're always trying to act like we need to be taught something and technically in this world we kind of do we kind of do and I think that's why Barack Obama would choose Kendrick Lamar over Drake any day because the need to educate ourselves about the issues surrounding the world, the real world, and our feelings and being honest with that, using incredible strategy and entendres and lyrics and all of these types of things and rhythms and beats is an art. Not only is it an art, it's, 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 it's a great use of our life. It's it's a purpose. And I think that's what Kendrick is trying to say that yes, I'm I'm living my purpose, which is to teach, which is to provide context to world issues, to national issues, to um provide something, you know, to this world that has an impact. And how is that wrong, Drake? How is that a bad thing? And I think Drake is envy of that. And I think when Drake says that, you know, kind of just dropped in music right now. Somebody should give him a Grammy. I forgot what it's called. It's a line where like Drake said, oh, oh uh, kind of just opened his mouth. Somebody should give him a Grammy right now. Because when Kendrick opened his mouth, there's impact. There's a message. There's something that that can be learned from. What can I learn from you, Drake? What can I learn from you? Drake. And I think that's something to 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 discuss. And I think what can be learned from you based on what the industry guys are saying is that you have great melodies. You can great you can you can produce a great hit. You have great producers. So you do know the formulaic formula. The formula that can produce a, a, a great hit song. However, does that provide an impact? Like what Kendrick is trying to do is trying to educate. So I don't like that too. And yes, rapping is a way for us to like bring us out of some slavery. Some of us are technically still in them. Some of them are in symbolically through racism. So, you know, as a way of educating ourselves too, Kendrick is trying to educate the masses, you know, education is power. So I actually don't, I actually don't understand that. And I understand where Kendrick is coming from and that's why I'm a fan of Kendrick and Beyonce and that's both of them in which I pray to God that I one day become one of them a person like that that somebody looks up to because of their impact and the message that they're providing the world and the goodness and the positivity and that they're trying to elevate life you know through their message through their art and that's why I love Kendrick and that's why I love Beyonce. And that is and that is a similarity between those two because both of them are trying to elevate out of, out of slavery. Look what Beyonce did in, in the Cowboy Carter album, which I'll talk about in the last 
in the next episode, I guess. Um, I filmed a while back, but I'll post that. She's elevating us all out of what we think country music is. Country music was not made by white people. It was made by her ancestors, black people. So for her to create a music that pulls in all of that, she's a technically another example of how an artist is getting us out of slavery. So listen, I think the rap beef was incredible. I loved it. I heard Drake might drop more music. I think he should take the time to, to there's a lot I think is going on with the shooting that happened at his house. I think he needs to think about some things, think about how he needs to move it, move his through his career, figure out who hates him, who's the mole. And um, yeah, I mean, I really do think that he has a lot, a lot, a lot to think about. And I do, I, my suggestion and my prediction is that I think Drake will drop an ep a single this summer, a single that will, when things die down, that would be a hit. Hopefully it'll be a hit. If not, then don't drop anything until later this year. Okay. Um, let me know what you guys think about everything so far. I'm really interested. And um, yeah, that's it for this episode. That's what I'm, I've, I've been about in the last week. It's been really fun and exciting being a hip hop fan. Stay woke, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye.